me quickly introduce you. You are a product design lead at Cloudflare, and um, well, our latest post, our latest podcast interview was actually live with your colleague Claire Waters, who is a senior manager and product a product content experience content experience person at Cloudflare. So <laughs> thank you. Um, and I I need to tell you that this episode is just published. So you can check it out on apidocs.org or you can look at it. Um, you can look for it on your favorite podcast platform by searching for the API the Docs podcast. Um, so Megan, thank you for <laughs> for being here and um, Please uh, show us your presentation and um, good luck. Awesome, thank you. Just get ready and share my screen. Can you all see this? All right, awesome. Well, uh, hi, it's great to meet you all. Uh, my name is Megan and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about CLIs, command line interfaces and LLMs and dive into what we can learn about them from each other. A little bit about me. Uh, I'm a product design lead at Cloudflare. Uh, I've been here for about a year. Before that, I worked at Meta. And I specialize in designing for emerging technology, and in particular, the intersection of highly technical spaces with people and design. At Cloudflare, I work on Cloudflare's developer platform and AI products, which means I spend most of my time thinking about the developer experience and the intersection of developer experience with AI. One thing that I've learned from my years of working for developer tools and in highly technical spaces is that for developers, there's a wide variety of complex touch points or interfaces that developers use, each having a very unique set of principles and each fluidly playing a specific role in the entire developer experience or DX. Things like dashboards, developer studios, command line interfaces, docs, community forums. These are all the different places where developers encounter our products and really learn a little bit more and learn how to build. Uh, and at their core, each of these interfaces is optimized to understand the intent of a developer and help them perform either the right action at the right time or provide the right information according to what they're looking for. My framework for thinking about the developer experience is a twofold in this Venn diagram. First, on the left here, you have a cohesive set of capabilities that work together seamlessly and help developers build better products. This is the core technology that we offer. On the right hand, you have the more traditional interface side of things, the intuitive collection of interfaces that meets developers where they are on their development journal and helps them build better products. And the overarching theme here you can see is that we're all trying to help developers build better products. Now we have AI layered on top of this. And I think this is actually a really interesting point in time to dive into this discussion because AI is really revolutionizing the development workflow. It's unlocked a lot of new use cases, but also old use cases that we never really thought possible before. This includes things like automating menial tasks or embedding new services into our common workflows. But one thing I've noticed is that when a new technology emerges, we often want to invent something new. I myself fall into this a lot, but I think we get excited about the future and we're biased to want to innovate as much as possible. But I really do think that there's so many great lessons or ideas that we can learn from the past that are right there. And one of these examples, I think we can take as looking at one of the most popular use cases for AI today, and this is chatbots. I'm fairly certain that most of us have probably looked at chatbots as the most obvious use case to leverage AI in our products. And that's because LLMs have given us the ability to speak directly to our computers. Going back to that original intent, it gives us a way as users to express more naturally exactly what we want out of the system and tailor the information that we're trying to get out of it. But as developers or someone who is built for developers, does this interface look a little familiar? How about now? I don't think it's too much of a stretch of the imagination to see chatbots as the descendants of the command line interface, or honestly, all interfaces to be a descendant of the command line interface. And if you're following along here with me, I think there's actually so much that we can learn from this original UI that can help us understand how to best incorporate AI in the future. 
And so what I really want to focus on today is that as you all dive into the exercise of understanding how AI can fit into your products, I urge you not to look only at the future, but also do the exercise of reflecting in the past, in particular in two big ways. The first is to revisit past no's. We've probably all done a lot of thinking already on different use cases or problems that we want to solve, and there must have been many that we discounted as not feasible or potentially not possible because of where we are today. These are now potentially available to us with AI. The second piece is to remember to focus on your foundations. These are the pieces that we've proven that work, and just because they're older doesn't mean that they're wrong and doesn't mean that we should be including these as a foundation into our products in the future. So diving into that first pillar, revisiting past no's, AI really unlocks a lot of old workflows that we previously discounted. In particular, those that connect our rich resources of information like docs directly into the interfaces where our developers do most of their work. I'm sure you're all very, very familiar with this of tabbing through docs to your IDE, to your command line, back to a dashboard. What if we could embed all of these surfaces together to have the information available to you right where you want it? I'm gonna walk through a few examples that I've encountered in my experience building for developers, but I would also say some of these could be generally available for most platforms. And I hope they inspire you on how you can include AI in your platforms. The first DX plate that I often make, and one mistake that I often encounter is incorrectly typing in a command or uh, confusing commands in common workflows. In particular, because I am definitely not a developer and I don't spend all day in a development environment, trying to remember the specific commands or flags I need for specific actions can be quite hard. I'm almost always trying different commands and I'm almost always wrong the first few times, so I'm very familiar with this error. But what if corrective action could be in context? And what if you don't have to retype the command, but you simply need to opt in? This use case is not new, and this problem is not new. But what is new with AI is not needing to code in these corrections programmatically, but instead they could be automatically generated based off of your documentation, based off of your past behavior. Imagine the efficiency gains you could have for common command mistakes that we often make. Another really great application of this could be onboarding or educational services for your platform. Imagine the different spectrum of developers you have, either new to command line interfaces, new to the products that you're shipping, this could be revolutionizing and helping people understand exactly how to interact with your APIs. Another common DX play I see is knowing what to do next in multi-command workflows. In CLIs, you don't really have the benefit of a UI to be able to have recommendations or prompts or multifaceted workflows. It's just an input and output mechanic. And often CLIs don't necessarily have fully guided workflows, either not built by the team and often very intentionally because it allows for a lot more flexibility of combining different commands together. But at the same time, some subsequent actions are so common that I'm constantly following the same permutation of steps, and I'm really just copying and pasting a set of commands from docs. Imagine a world where these subsequent commands are automatically generated based off of my past actions as a developer and what I commonly do, recommendations from the product team, and popular next steps in documentation. This could be particularly helpful, once again, for new developers or new users onboarding. And you might look at this and think, wow, that would get really annoying right off the bat. Well, this could also just be a flag that's turned on and off in your command line as you're developing different workflows or as you're using different kinds of tools. It could also be an overarching service that you uh, download as a plugin into your command line for an assistive correction command or for generative next steps. And finally, this is probably the most advanced application of AI, uh, but this is to automate repetitive or tedious tasks. It's pretty common to see full workflows that ask developers to first input a command and then check or inject code in a way that could be fully automated in the future. I wanna take a very common example that I see, which is updating your JavaScript dependencies. A lot of developers have to do this weekly, monthly as they make different pushes, and it often involves running this command and then going into your code editor and making the updates yourself manually. Now, imagine a future where running this command would not only check for updates, but also identify the code that needs to be changed and suggest updates for your approval all within your CLI. This could even be used as a linter when creating new deployments. There are, of course, some considerations needed here for reviewing and publishing code, but imagine this as a starting point for what could be possible for automatic code generation in your workflows. 
So just a quick recap of some of the use cases or problems that exist today that can now be solved with AI, input errors, dead-end workflows, and repetitive tasks. These are well-known problems with command line interfaces today, but could be huge wins for the developer experience and are not innovative, but rather uh, use cases that we know well that AI can solve with the new technology that we have available to us. Now, beyond just revisiting past nodes, I wanna look at our second pillar, which is not just considering the existing problems, but also considering the existing successes. These successes, I think, can be considered the solid foundations that we've built in the past. So I challenge you to think about the existing principles, products, or features that have made your platforms great and successful. I'm gonna share some examples today that I think are generally applicable to CLIs and AI innovation, but I'm sure there's much more tailored to your specific product spaces. One piece I feel quite passionate about as a designer is actually the consistency of patterns shared across platforms. And this is something I've personally encountered myself where with new technology, it feels like there's a huge opportunity to set the gold standard and define these patterns for yourself. And it's so tempting to want to redefine here and just be the one that establishes a new pattern for the industry. But really, sometimes it's just not needed. So instead of thinking this as a raw opportunity to define a new pattern, I think a better reframing is to think about this as a choice that you as a developer, designer, or product thinker have to make about what needs to be new and what can be kept from our old systems to make it easier for people to adopt and use our innovations. A really great example of this is the flag structures in CLIs. This is a well-known global structure that's made it across all command line interfaces. It's so easy for anyone to understand that as you input commands, there's this general flag structure that you can use in order to have provide additional detail to your command. And this is the exact kind of pattern that I think we haven't seen yet develop in our uh, prompt-based interfaces, but I think will slowly evolve over time and one that we can start to think through and share with each other. Another really important foundation is how you encourage innovation on your platform. And a few folks have touched on this already today, but I really think it's important to continuously encourage innovation and keep our architectures open, especially for builders or the developers that we're building for, we really need to invite our users in. These are a unique set of users who are most often our biggest users and our biggest innovators on our platform. By making all of our products or platforms open source, it allows them to innovate specifically in the use cases that they're trying to solve and really help get that engine moving a lot faster. We can learn from them and they can learn from us and we're just building better and better products for each other. And lastly, it wouldn't be a talk about docs if we also didn't talk about docs. I really think it's important to make our information open and consumable. And for the most part, we're doing this today. But the slight pivot that we need to account for in AI is that we don't necessarily have a global structure for documentation to be consumed by AI today. We have a little bit of this with our open API schemas that teach our AIs how APIs work, but we don't necessarily have it for documentation. And I think there's a big opportunity here to provide structured documentation that can be easily consumed by any AI. This can help not only you train your own models, but also help inform a global knowledge bank that makes information and innovation more accessible and more available to different folks today. And so these are just some example of the foundations that I think are really critical to keep from CLIs that I think would be great for LLMs. But one thing to note is that a lot of this innovation and a lot of these principles are actually already in place with LLMs today. But it's a good reminder to explicitly aim to follow these as you continue to explore AI in your products. One thing I've personally noticed is that if it's not explicitly accounted for, it's pretty easy to forget to include these in your experiences. And it's just one thing that we constantly have to remind ourselves. And so as you go and explore how AI can revolutionize your products, I want you to remember that you know your customers best. So the use cases I shared today are just some examples that I've seen. But instead of the examples themselves, what I really encourage you is these two takeaways. And that is, as you're exploring new use cases for AI, revisit the past thinking or workshop that you've done to understand what could be possible today with this new technology that you haven't done in the past, and to focus on the foundations. What are the successes that you have in your products today that you want to ensure continue principally into the future? Sometimes it's better to be revolutionary by not being revolutionary at all. Thank you so much. That's all I have. If there's any questions, happy to answer them. Thank you so much, Megan, for your um, presentation.
Um, I was wondering uh, if there is anything that would come into your mind um, regarding collaboration in an ideal world. How how would how would everything work perfectly? How what do you what do you think? Uh, when you say collaboration, do you mean between different entities within product teams, or oh. yeah, it. it what 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 you what you feel uh would would be a good good way to go um um between product teams for example uh within and between product teams i think we just need to be more comfortable sharing knowledge and making mistakes in these early days of innovation uh, i saw this a little bit when i worked in mixed reality as well there's a little bit of a hesitancy when you are very passionate about this space, but it's also very new to share ideas that will be wrong because it's hard to want to be the one to make the mistake, especially when you're surrounded by so many peers who are so talented and so interested in this space. And I think the more comfortable we are with making the wrong call, the easier it will be to get to making the right call. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much.